Welcome back. Today we're talking about SCP, which of course stands for Super Cool Penguins. <laughs> now, SCP has been something that's been around for some years and people have been telling me to make a video about it for a while. It's kind of a big thing to get into, so I didn't want to do a video about SCP. I wanted to do a video about a part of it. We're going to talk about aquatic SCP entities because two videos ago in our usual monthly thalassophobia reddit deep dive pun intended we stumbled across a video of scp-3000 which is a big deep ocean dwelling serpent mother of god i think we're done yeah i think we're done but it got me thinking like hey what other aquatic scps are there that might be a good rabbit hole to go down for the theme of this channel. So, I picked out a couple, and we're gonna go through them. But beforehand, a brief explanation of SCP itself, because I know it's not, even though it's been around a while and it's pretty big, that doesn't mean everyone knows what it is. SCP is similar to the Backrooms, which is only helpful if you know what the Backrooms is. But it's similar in the sense that it's a community-created universe. So, in the back rooms, it's this, like, alternate, kind of upside-down dimension, and there's a description that people have come up with, like, a thousand floors of the back rooms that go all the way down. And so, oh, floor 415, there's bees everywhere, you know? And people can write these big, as if it were real, kind of documentations of each floor. In SCP, it's the same thing, but it's community-created, otherworldly entities or kind of anomalous entities so there's i want to say that there's seven thousand or so let's see here so far it goes up to about seven thousand there's gaps in how many have been created but there's thousands of these right so an scp could be like a weird door that you can walk through and it sends you to a different dimension so the scp foundation would you know acquire this door and lock it up somewhere so that people don't accidentally walk through it and, you know, study it or whatever. So that, that could be an SCP, and probably is one, to be honest. There might be one where it's uh, a shark that looks like a shark, but it can speak perfect English. That's not right. The SCPs range from totally safe, just anomalous, to, like, actually dangerous to humanity. But the goal is to capture and contain all of them because humanity doesn't need to know about all these anomalous things because all sorts of ruckus would break out if people knew that there was these sorts of alien or otherworldly or just weird things popping up in their world all the time it would make people not feel very safe scp stands for secure contain and protect this is what the scp foundation does they're spread around the whole world they're above the law they can do whatever they need to do to secure them and contain them in order to protect the world anyway that kind of very basic explanation aside, let's jump into it. So we're going to start with SCP-3000. SCP-3000 is a massive aquatic serpentine entity strongly resembling a giant moray eel. The full length of SCP-3000 is impossible to determine, but is hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. The head of SCP-3000 measures roughly 2.5 meters in diameter, and sections of the body proper are as large as 10 meters in diameter. So this is one big boy, basically. SCP-3000 is carnivorous, and despite its sedentary nature, is capable of moving quickly to dispatch prey. Despite its size, it is hypothesized that SCP-3000 does not require sustenance to maintain its biological functions. While SCP-3000 excretes a thin layer of a viscous, dark gray substance classified as Y909 through its skin as it consumes prey, the end result of its digestive processes is currently unknown. Direct observation of SCP-3000 may cause severe mental alterations in viewers. Individuals who directly observe SCP-3000, as well as any individuals within an uncertain distance of SCP-3000 experience inexplicable head pain, paranoia, general fear and panic, and memory loss or alteration. So basically, SCP-3000 is a big eel, so big that you can't really know how big it is, anywhere from 600 to 900 kilometers long, which if we math it, ugh, somewhere around 400 miles. It's carnivorous, which means it eats you, because don't look now, but you're made of meat. So this thing's just hanging out in the Bay of Bengal, and you can't really get too close to it because it makes you go insane, and it mostly just sits there. It doesn't really move that much. They at one point thought it was dead, but they've actually seen it move, so they know that it can move and it's alive, but it mostly just sits there. 
and you can't really study it very much if you go insane by getting near it. So they contain it by just keeping an eye on the area to see if it ever moves. But what would you do if it moved? You know, what if it decided to wake up and go on a rampage? Well, we'd get a new Godzilla movie, so that'd be cool. Next up, we have SCP-4217. SCP-4217 refers to both Bismarck, henceforth SCP-4217-A, so it's a two-parter, an anomalous German battleship sunk in 1941 and the large cephalopod organism that is fused to the inside of its hull henceforth SCP-4217-B. So A is the ship, B is the thing fused to the ship, but they both collectively make 4217. 4217-B possesses a pair of octopoid eyes. Octopoid? Yeah, I guess so. Which protrude from the base of SCP-4217-A superstructure and 1,200 to 200 meter long muscular hydrostat that extend from an opening in the stern. Aside from the presence of SCP-4217-B, SCP-4217-A, I'm just gonna call them A and B from now on, A shows no signs of damage sustained from battle or subsequent decades submerged underwater. B operates A's systems. This includes its full armament of eight main guns, 44 secondary guns, and 12 anti-aircraft guns so big battleship fully operational as far as we know and there's a big octopus thing kind of mangled through it that is con in control of the whole thing that's a lot of power for a big octopus to have kind of like a transformer octopus battleship honestly i'd buy that sounds like sharknado but like octo ship SCP-4217 typically remains submerged at a depth of 500 to 1,000 meters, navigating its territory. However, SCP-4217 will periodically surface and enter a hostile state. During this period, SCP-4217 will seek and attack non-threatening targets such as civilian cargo ships. If sufficiently damaged, it will revert to a passive state, otherwise it reverts after a median nine hours. So basically they kind of guard the location where this submerged octo ship is just kind of lurking and it just occasionally will just be like I'm gonna kill somebody and it will come up to the surface blast a bunch of people needs to get taught a lesson and then it goes back down again. Kind of sick honestly. If you think about it like from a mechanical standpoint really doesn't make any sense how it would like have the power to like reload the guns or whatever but we're talking about SCPs and they're anomalies anyway so we'll just you know, we'll say, hey, yeah, that makes sense. This is like the ultimate submechanophobia. So it's this old, ancient, sh basically ship wreck. Minus the wreck, I guess. Way deep in the water. And it's not just a ghost ship. It's like being controlled by an octopus monster that also has control over the guns and also, also just goes on a rampage every now and then. So kind of the ultimate. If you're afraid of submerged man-made objects, bada bing, bada boom. This one is coming for you. All right, next up we have SCP-054-FR, meaning it's from the France branch of SCP because it's a worldwide organization. SCP-054 is a water nymph, but SCP-054-FR, the France 54, is something else. SCP-054-FR is a phenomenon occurring in some waves off the western coast of and and the eastern coast of it is characterized by the physical transformation of affected waves to resemble the jaws of a great white shark. SCP-054-FR is capable of remaining unnoticed until it is almost too late to act. It is capable of forming on waves at least 4 meters tall, but the maximum height at which it can reach is unknown. Affected waves are capable of rolling at three times the speed of non-affected waves, if a non-aquatic animal or a human being is situated between SCP-054-FR and the closest coast. Appearances of SCP-054-FR grow considerably if the previously evoked individuals are situated at a distance of at least 250 meters from the coast. Whether they are swimmers, divers, or aquatic vehicles of moderate size, with the most common victims having been surfers, injuries caused by scp 54 are similar to that which could be accomplished by a great white shark, but with pressure being directly proportional to the height of the affected wave. Injuries lethal in 68 of cases occur during the collapse of the wave over the victim. Reported injuries have been as simple as a removed limb to total disappearance of the victim. The only method of avoiding injury is to dive under the wave before impact. I find this one to be a little bit funny. Of course, some of these are gonna be a little bit funny. This one, I think if you were there and this actually happened, that'd be freaky, right? 
But I think it's a funny idea that, like, the wave turns into a jaw of a shark and then, like, slaps you three times as hard as usual. But the pictures depicting it are actually kind of, kind of creepy. So they call it the Blue Fear. This guy has no idea there's an anomalous shark wave entity right behind him. Like, bro, turn around. You gotta check for that sort of thing. Also this. All attempts at damaging manifestations of SCP-054-FR via weapons fire have proven ineffective, with shots disappearing into the wall of water. So imagine you're just chilling on the beach and like a bunch of like sketchy looking military like covert crew is like just shooting the waves. People are like, you good? And they're like, oh, we saw a big shark out there. Big wave shark. It was it was a shark in the wave. We got to protect surfers from the wave shark. Anyway, moving on. SCP-1128. This is a good one. SCP-1128 is an entity that manifests as a massive aquatic predator to anyone given a full description of the being's appearance through either spoken or written descriptions or visual depictions of the being. You're basically only at risk of dealing with this monster if you know what it looks like, whether someone describes it to you or you see pictures. So I'm going to describe it to you and I'm going to show you pictures. Look at that. Nice. You're all at danger now. Don't go in the water. Persons infected by SCP-1128 will initially exhibit no abnormal behavior, though some cases show a general aversion to activities involving bodily immersion in water such as bathing or swimming. Should subject ever be fully immersed in water, they will disappear completely under the surface of the water regardless of the water's actual depth. In most cases, subjects reappear moments later in a panic state and frantically try to leave the water, while in some other cases the water will become polluted with blood and debris confirmed to be the remains of the subject. Subjects that have reappeared intact claim that they were transported to a vast ocean where they are pursued by SCP-1128. Interviews with these individuals carry some risk of further SCP-1128 contamination as descriptions of the being's appearance trigger further infections. SCP-1128 infection can be treated with Class C amnestics as it appears memory of the entity or descriptions of it are required for its anomalous properties to take effect. Let me repackage that for you just in case you yeah, didn't get that one. Once you know what this thing looks like, whether it's from a description like I just gave you or a picture like I just showed you, you're now infected by the 1128. And now, next time you're in a body of water, you might get teleported into just an infinite ocean where 1128 is in there in the water, hunting you, and it will either kill you and send you back as just blood and guts, or maybe you'll survive long enough to get sent back just in a panic. But even if you are sent back, pretty much now that you know what it looks like, you just shouldn't go in the water ever again, which, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't have done anyway. All right, lastly, we have SCP-1865. SCP-1865 is an entity residing in a deep sea diving suit, approximately 1.2 meters tall and weighing 150 kilograms. What is assumed to be a mouth similar in appearance to that of a cephalopod is visible within the porthole. This structure opens and closes intermittently. The suit SCP-1865 resides in appears to have been manufactured by an unknown party at some point between 1955 and 1965. The suit is airtight and filled with seawater, containing traces of vegetation and watercraft debris. When punctured, the suit is sealed from the inside with a fleshy substance assumed to be an extension of SCP-1865. This sealing process takes approximately 5 seconds during most testing attempts, and is present throughout the suit. It is possible to remove portions of SCP-865 from the suit, although contact with open air appears to damage the object and cause the exposed sections of SCP-1865 to immediately calcify. 1865 achieves mobility via a series of pipes and valves that have been integrated into the suit. This system will take in and release seawater in a way that causes SCP-1865 to move at a slow gait when underwater. Inspection of the pipe's interior via fiber optic cameras has shown that the pipes leading from valves are translucent and appear to be composed of organic material. Inspection is limited due to damage caused to the cable during observation. The suit is divided into seven sections, including the abdomen, head, arms, hands, feet, chest, and legs. These dividers in these sections act as main points for valves and are composed of a chitinous material. So it's basically a diving suit that's inhabited by some sort of like cephalopod creature. And I use cephalopod lightly. The only thing about it that sounds cephalopod is it's basically mouth. But the rest of it just seems like fleshy nothing. It just seems like you poke a hole in it and a bunch of fleshy something basically plugs it back up again. Could be just like a big cephalopod creature in there, or it could just all be just a big blob shoved into a suit. 
pretty creepy though because I feel like old school diving suits are already really just kind of eerie looking and part of it comes from just the old style photos they're usually featured in and the fact that since they're old they're always really run down and rusty looking and just kind of like the design just looks very anomalous anyway they're just kind of creepy so picturing one of those being able to like propel itself when you know there's no one inside and there's just some sort of unknown creature kind of controlling it all. I don't really like that one. So anyway, that's the five I wanted to show you guys today. There's a bunch more water-based ones. There's also a bunch that aren't water-based ones. Um, I'm obviously not going to become an SCP channel. But if you like this, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time. We're doing Subnautica with 28 mods again next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.